to be in India in 1975 and I stayed up until like 78. So I saw Prabhupada's disappearance pastimes and I saw Gautamal Krishna Maharaj taking great care to serve Srila Prabhupada. It was very shocking to me that some years back people came up with a poison theory. I thought it was just the most ridiculous thing. It was just so outrageous. Like, there was not, nobody ever considered, like, I don't know how people came up with these crazy ideas. But anybody who witnessed, and I did witness, I saw how much love and how much care and concern the people serving Srila Prabhupada had for Srila Prabhupada. And the central figure in that was Tamal Krishna Goswami. He gave up all of his services in 1977. He gave up everything. He just left everything and came to be with Prabhupada. Because he, he was so intelligent, he could understand that Prabhupada's time was limited. And he just wanted to spend every possible minute he could with Srila Prabhupada. So that was one thing which I can always see is with the Mo Krishna Goswami. Even after Prabhupada left, he was very chaste to Srila Prabhupada's mission and Srila Prabhupada's desire. Although after Prabhupada's left, there were, you know, when the great Acharya like Srila Prabhupada, when they leave the world, then there's always some disturbance. There's going to be upheaval. It's a very difficult time. And it really was a very difficult time for all the devotees. We were all confused. You know, I couldn't imagine Prabhupada was going to leave us. I thought Prabhupada would always be with us. But Tamal Krishna Maharaj, he had better vision. He understood he wanted to be with Prabhupada. And he gave full energy to serving Srila Prabhupada in every aspect of his service. I remember when Prabhupada came to Juhu in 1977, it was about the summertime. So uh, Prabhupada had just come back from the West, from the West and he came to stay Juhu for a few days. Who's going in? What? You have to do everything exactly the way Prabhupada wants. It should be very soft, very sweet, careful. But Mal Krishna Maharaj was monitoring all these kinds of details. And then, of course, Prabhupada moved to Vrindavan, to Krishna Balaram. Mandir, Mal Krishna Maharaj was in so much anxiety. It was, it, was, it was such a tense time. It was so unbelievably intense. The whole atmosphere, we didn't know what's going to happen. And Prabhupada was telling the devotees he wanted to go around Govardhan Hill. He wanted to do Govardhan Parikram. Because it was Kartik time. And if 
came up to the time of the Govardhan Puja and Prabhupada, Prabhupada was in that condition, you know, he was so ill, so sick, but he's saying, I want to go on Govardhan Parikram. And Mount Krishna Maharaj was in so much anxiety, trying to discourage Prabhupada, that Prabhupada, please, Prabhupada, this will not be a very good thing for you to do. But it was not so easy thing to do, you know, very difficult. Only Tamal Krishna Maharaj could handle these kind of situations. So he was, he had that ability. He was uh, always close to Prabhupada. He told us, he said when, when he was a, a young devotee, Prabhupada called him to come and take lunch with him in Los Angeles. Usually Prabhupada would eat on his own, but one day Kamal Krishna, at that time he was not even a sannyasi, he called him to come and take lunch with him. And Prabhupada wanted him to promise him that he would distribute books, the books. He said, Prabhupada explained to him, he said, we want to give a big order to dine upon, to print back to Godhead magazine. And I want to know, how many copies will you distribute? How many copies will you pledge to distribute every month? So Prabhupada called him and asked Kamal Krishna Maharaj. At that time he was kind of like the, the temple manager of Los Angeles. He was like overseeing all the affairs and Vishnu Jan was there at first of that time. So Prabhupada had so much trust in Kamal Krishna Maharaj from the beginning that when he wanted to increase the book production, he called him, he wanted him to promise that he would distribute books. So that, that was one example. Kamal Krishna Maharaj was always, always thinking, what would Prabhupada do in this situation? After Prabhupada left, there were many problems, there were many crises came up overseeing the affairs of the ISKCON movement. It was a very difficult time. People who were in the GBC at that time, probably had a story for those who could tell you better than me, that the, the GBC meetings were very passionate affairs with a lot of screaming, <laughs> shouting, <laughs> very intense. <everything. laughs> so Tamal Krishna Maharaj was there, you know, he had to be involved in the, all of this. But, you know, he was a leader. He was one of the prominent leaders. And because he was such a leader in ISKCON, so people would criticize. Because that's the nature of the world. The bigger position you take, the more people will look for some fault. And they'll try to find some fault and criticize you and try to pull you down. So very difficult situation. Tamal Krishna Maharaj had to undergo all of these things. People were not able to often see the good and they would try to find the fault. But he tolerated all of these things and he went ahead. He thought what he wanted to do to please show the Prabhupada. And he, he, at one point, because he'd come to China, Prabhupada, of course, had give, told him, you go to China. That was uh, before Prabhupada departed. Prabhupada told him that, yeah, you go to China, that will be good. Because there were so many, so much criticism, so many problems in America. And so he thought it might be better you go and start something over in China, in the Far East. And so Tamal Krishna Maharaj did that. But that was how I ended up over there. You know, he told me, he said that we need to develop the Far East. He said, if we have a movement just in the West, it's not very good. We have to be everywhere. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu predicted Prithiviti Achiyat Nogorati Gram. That every town and village all over the planet. And if we don't have a movement in the East, then it's not very good. What is wrong? 
And so he encouraged me in this way that I should put some energy for that. And he also would come there regularly. He was very concerned. He considered the Far East, China, that was like his Prabhu Dutta Desh, the place given to him by Prabhu. And he did come there and he was always concerned what's going on there, what's happening there, what are they doing there. In those days, we didn't have anything in much in, at all in China, but it was really just Hong Kong. But he developed Hong Kong very nicely. He put a lot of energy into it. He got Surabi Prabhu to design the place. Very nice in a little apartment in Hong Kong. He designed a beautiful temple because of the relationship with Kamal Krishna Goswami. So Surabi Prabhu kindly designed it for him and arranged all the different artifacts, made like a little museum there in the temple. Kamal Krishna Maharaj was really a perfection. Everything he did had to be really, it had to be really just right. If it wasn't perfect, it, then he, he wouldn't be satisfied. He wanted perfection. I, re I remember one, one marriage, and she made a she made some cake or something like this, and it hadn't come out very well. And he said to her, what is this? What is it? You give me like this? You know, he, he, could just, he really chastised her. Why? He said, because I know you can do better. I want you to do better. I want you to do the best. This is for Krishna. You should do the best. So he was really a, a connoisseur of perfection. He wanted everything done really nicely. I haven't been to the Dallas temple since he took it over, but uh, from what I understand, it's very beautiful. They have beautiful paintings there, the Rajasthani art paintings on all the walls, and the Kalachandri restaurant is very well managed and very beautiful and attracts a lot of people. So this is an example. Then also the, the, they have also the TKG school there in Dallas also. He put a lot his energy into all of these different things. You know, he wanted everything done really nicely for Prabhupada. And so he wanted that we would also continue to serve Shiva Prabhupada's mission nicely, that we would put our full efforts into wherever we are, dedicate ourselves to giving this Krishna consciousness. He, he said, we have come to give. We didn't come to take. We have to have that moment that we want to give. And he really, he, he, he did everything he could. He, and that was why his health suffered because of the, so much energy, so much mental energy which he put into seeing the future of ISKCON, that his health had problems, and he did have like prostate cancer, and he underwent very painful. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know the words very well. Take this off. So he, he suffered a lot with that also. Yeah. <laughs> but then. Somehow he was getting himself back together again and he came for the GBC meeting and he attended the GBC meeting in 2002 and he really took the shoulders, he stole the stage. You know, everybody on the GBC meeting, they were all very impressed, you know, with his intellectual acumen and his quick thinking, sharp responses. He was really a very dynamic personality and his sudden departure from the world was really a great loss for us. I really lament. I couldn't imagine. I could not imagine he would leave us so suddenly, so early. 
and it was really a big loss for our movement. Anyway, we try to remember all of its instructions, and we pray that you will also guide us more in the future. So, more and more senior devotees are coming. I think it's nice. We can watch this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.